Hey guys, this is the 14th video in my series about rheumatology. In previous videos, we have talked about anti-nuclear antibody, anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody. We've talked about rheumatoid factor as well as anti-CCP. Today, it's time to talk about the nasty anti-double-stranded DNA, which is present in lupus and associated with lupus nephritis. And let's get started. If you are not subscribed to Medicosis, you are missing on all of these goodies. And um, I don't know what to tell you. Just, just subscribe, guys. Welcome to Rheumatology, where no single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis. The most important question to ask yourself in Rheumatology is, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? Some guys are asking me, when are you going to start talking about the actual diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus... Uh, osteoarthritis guys the foundation first let's lay the basics after you understand the basics correctly the rest of rheumatology is going to be a piece of cake remember my hematology series same stuff the basics first everything built from there and ask any engineer what happens when they miss with the foundation let's have a quick review because repetition is the mother of pedagogy ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies or O2 antibodies against your nucleus. It's only positive if the titer is greater than 1 over 80. Titers, the higher the titer, the more likely you have more serum O2 antibodies, the more likely you have an autoimmune disease. But the higher the titer doesn't mean the disease is more severe. It has nothing to do with the disease severity or the symptoms. That's why you should never repeat ANA. We're done with ANA, let's talk about anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody or ANCA. They are IgO2 antibodies. Against the nucleus? No. Against the cytoplasm of every cell? No. Only neutrophils and monocytes. Are they associated with arthritis? No. Vasculitis or vasculitides. Again, they do not correlate with the severity of the symptoms. So ANA were antibodies against the nucleus. ANCA are antibodies against the cytoplasm of neutrophils and monocytes. Rheumatoid factor is an antibody against an antibody, just like a dog chasing its tail. This is crazy. IgM O2 antibodies against IgG. Which part of IgG? Please be specific. The FC portion of IgG. Cool. When they bind together, they form an immune complex. This is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, and now your joints are on fire, metaphorically speaking. Rheumatoid factor doesn't have to be IgM, it could be IgG, IgA, IgG, IgD, or whatever, and it even could be a cryoglobin, which means on cooling the antibody precipitate. It makes perfect sense because IgM and cold go together. If you remember my videos about autoimmune hemolytic anemia and the cold subtype and the warm subtype the cold subtype was igm the warm subtype was igg it makes perfect sense rheumatoid factor is more sensitive than specific rheumatoid factor is one of the criteria for diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid factor is positive in 80 percent of patients with rheumatoid arthritis that's why it's sensitive high levels of rheumatoid Factor in the plasma means you get worse prognosis and you're more likely to get joint erosions and deformity. In other words, rheumatoid factor has a prognostic value and it does correlate with the symptoms. Anti-CCP, which was the topic of the previous video, positive in 60-70% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis, by definition that's not very sensitive. However, it's very specific and not even this, it predicts the progression of rheumatoid arthritis. If you have positive anti-CCP, you're more likely to get erosions and joint deformity. So it has a prognostic value and it does correlate with the severity or the symptoms of the patient. Anti-CCP antibodies can predict erosion. And if you have just joint pain but no inflammation with positive CCP, you will get rheumatoid arthritis soon. The doctor better start the treatment now which makes anti-CCP an excellent test for screening of at-risk patients. Rheumatoid factor is more sensitive but less specific for rheumatoid arthritis, of course. Anti-CCP is the opposite, less sensitive but more specific. Cool. If you have both rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP in the serum, 
you have worse prognosis, unfortunately, and you have more aggressive symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, and you will have extra articular manifestations such as carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, inflammation of your sclera, and um, like interstitial fibrosis of the lung, etc., etc., etc. For a limited number of people, I have 50 hematology cases now available on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash metacosis, get those clinical vignettes. It's gonna be awesome. After this crazy long introduction, let's talk about today's topic, which is the anti-double-stranded DNA. It's an O2 antibody, which means antibody against the cell. What type of antibody? IgG, please. If it's anti-double-stranded DNA, where I grew up, DNA was in the nucleus. So, anti-double-stranded DNA is a specific subtype of ANA, which makes perfect sense. It's anti-nuclear antibody, it's just specific. O2 antibodies against the double-stranded DNA, detected by, again, ELISA or immunofluorescence. It's very, very specific for lupus, especially if you have high levels. However, some normal individuals will have anti-double-stranded DNA, especially if they have low levels of the anti-double-stranded DNA, which makes anti-double-stranded DNA less sensitive since normal individual can have it. So, it's less sensitive, it cannot rule out, but it bloody well can rule in lupus. Not sensitive, however, it's very specific. It's not sensitive for lupus. Absence of anti-double-stranded DNA cannot rule out systemic lupus erythromatosis. It correlates with SLA activity, specifically renal disease. If you have lupus and you have anti-double-stranded DNA, you're more likely to get lupus nephritis, which is a glomerulonephritis. However, anti-double-stranded DNA is absent in drug-induced lupus. Don't confuse systemic lupus erythromatosis with drug-induced lupus. They are not the same. That's why here the kidney is sad. You have lupus nephritis. It's sad because of the nasty anti-double-stranded DNA O2 antibodies, which are IgG subtype. Pathophysiology of anti-double-stranded DNA. It's a theory. So normally you have a cell, and at the end of its life, it undergoes apoptosis, which is cell suicide. This will lead to phagocytosis of all the cellular components and compartments. And for the nucleus, it undergoes pycnosis, karyorexis, and karyolysis. Condensation, fragmentation, dissolution of the nucleus. Cool. Cool, very nice, very smooth. On the other hand, when you have a pathology such as lupus, here's the cell. There is defective apoptosis. Here, when it's normal, the cell cleans up the place like a good cat that cleans after itself. Here, there is decreased dead cell clearance. It's not capable of clearing the place and destroying all the cellular compartments peacefully. So we have defective apoptosis and decreased dead cell clearance, not to be confused with H and M clearance. Cool. Extracellular DNA persists because nobody is cleaning up the place. You will have extracellular DNA, which is kind of weird because I don't know about you, but where I grew up, DNA was supposed to be inside the cell. What the flip is DNA doing in the extracellular matrix or extracellular space? Because nobody is cleaning it up. It's called defective apoptosis and decreased dead cell clearance. If DNA is in the plasma, do you think this is weird? Yes, of course. If something is weird inside your body, your body will fight it and it will form O2 antibodies against these nasty antigens that we are not used to. These O2 antibodies are called the anti-double-stranded DNA because there is DNA in the serum, which is very weird. Now you have antigen, antigen presenting cells, which are cells that present the antigen, present them to what? To the T helper lymphocyte, which will activate the B lymphocyte. They will stop being so naive and they will grow up forming plasma cells, secreting O2 antibodies. We call them anti-double-stranded DNA because this is what the flip that they do. Anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies will attack, and baby, it's gonna be very nasty. 
Anti-double-stranded DNA usually correlate with the disease activity of lupus. What do you mean? I mean lupus symptoms. What else? Lupus nephritis. What else? Lupus vasculitis. So in cases of SLE flare, since anti-double-stranded DNA correlate with the symptoms, when you have a flare, you will have high levels of anti-double-stranded DNA in the plasma. Makes perfect sense. When you treat lupus and the symptoms, start to disappear, anti-double-stranded DNA will decrease. This is called correlation with the symptoms or with the activity of the disease. If lupus patient has positive anti-double-stranded DNA, they may respond to therapy with, with a drug called bilimumab. If it ends with a MAB, it's a monoclonal antibody. It's an antibody which has one target and one target only. Patients taking TNF-alpha inhibitors may show positive anti-double-stranded DNA. This is something separate than lupus. It's just a side note. If you are being treated with TNF-alpha inhibitors such as adalimumab, etanercept, infleximab, you can have positive anti-double-stranded DNA in your blood. This is a very important note. Anti-double-stranded DNA correlate with lupus activity in many, many patients, but not all of them. Some patients, those exceptions, can have lupus activity with normal anti-double-stranded DNA level. So we have two groups of patients. Group A, which is the majority, when they have systemic lupus erythromatosis active in their body, they show increased level of anti-double-stranded DNA. But we have group B. Group B will have lupus activity in their body, but the anti-double-stranded DNA level in their blood is normal, which means anti-double-stranded DNA is more useful for some than others. So how to figure out which is which? You monitor the level of anti-double-stranded DNA continually for every patient and try to correlate it with the disease activity for this specific patient. So you have a patient, the patient has a flare, measure the anti-double-stranded DNA. The patient is treated and now doesn't have the flare, again repeat the anti-double-stranded DNA test. Does the test correlate with the disease activity for this specific patient? Yes. You write on your note that this patient has a lupus activity that correlates with anti-double-stranded DNA. Another patient that you have, he has lupus or she has lupus with the lupus activity. They have a flare, anti-double-stranded DNA is normal. They are treated from lupus, the anti-double-stranded DNA level is normal. So for this patient, anti-double-stranded DNA does not correlate with disease activity. So what we did here is called trending. You monitor the level of anti-double-stranded DNA and try to trend it with the activity of the disease for this specific patient because everyone is different. Some pearls for my medicosis gang. Systemic lupus erythromatosis can damage your kidney in several ways. It could lead to nephritic syndrome such as diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis or Lupus can lead to nephrotic syndrome, such as membranous nephropathy. Lupus is really bad for your kidney. It can cause nephritic or nephrotic syndrome. Don't ever forget that. Quick summary about anti-double-stranded DNA. Very specific for systemic lupus erythromatosis. Is it that sensitive? No, but it's very specific. Correlates with lupus activity, especially nephritis and vasculitis. It's absent in drug-induced lupus. You should trend every patient to see if the activity of lupus correlate with the level of anti-double-stranded DNA in their plasma. It increases and decreases based on disease activity. When there is a flare, it increases. When there is treatment or there is no flare, it decreases. Quiz time. When can a patient with rheumatoid arthritis become positive for anti-double-stranded DNA? Please don't say when they get lupus. This is not the freaking question. I'm telling you this patient only has rheumatoid arthritis. However, they developed anti-double-stranded DNA antibody. Is that possible? When can this happen? Let me know down below in the comment section. 50 hematology notes are waiting for you guys on Patreon, limited time only. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, get all of my notes about hematology, 
and boom, you'll be in a good shape. Thank you for watching, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis, and as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.